If I was to ask you what the greatest truck ever built was, what would your answer be? Naturally, some would look towards the future with its cutting edge technology and strange sci-fi like electrical things such as a Tesla Semi. Others may choose a more tried and tested diesel hungry Volvo, Kenworth Man or even Daimler that's kept the world running for so long already. But what if I told you that the greatest truck ever created was actually built in the 60s by the Ford Motoring Company and has been lost somewhere in America for over 50 years, at least until now. The truck in question was Ford's answer to the jet age battle of the 1960s and was once crowned the future of motoring. Standing in at a staggering 13 foot tall and over 100 foot long, powered by a 600 horsepower gas turbine engine, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Ford's Big Red. Meet Big Red, an experimental gas turbine powered super truck for the 1970s. Now don't let the simplistic name fool you, Big Red in its day was a marvel of modern engineering that took the world by storm in its 1964 World Fair debut. But despite being the poster child for America's new era of motoring and transportation, the truck never went into production and after its promotional tour of America had finished by the 1970s, no one really knew where Big Red itself had ended up and slowly it was forgotten about, deemed another lost vehicle never to be seen again. Rumours of its whereabouts popped up from time to time on the internet, but no pictures or hard evidence was ever presented. However, thanks to some folks over at the drive, all that's about to change. But before we get into that juicy story of where in God's green earth Big Red's been hiding all these years, we need to take a step back in time and learn the heritage to understand why so many people have been eager to see this behemoth of a Ford since its disappearance. The story of Big Red begins in 1961 when Ford made a 300 horsepower gas turbine prototype that the US Defense Department took special interest in. Later they contracted Ford to develop a 600 horsepower version for military application. The result was the 705 600 horsepower gas turbine engine with 855 pound feet of torque that would later go on to be redesigned for the more PR friendly truck concept to launch the engine to the public. The 705 motor in Big Red was the first turbine engine to use supercharging employed in two compression stages to drive with only half the engine running while the other half powers the cab features and with a push of a button reset back to full power. The creation of Big Red was partly motivated by the idea of an interstate highway system that was being built at the time and by the mid 60s was almost half finished and open for use. Ford's big picture idea with this was to have large long haulage semi trucks constantly moving across the highways only stopping for loading deliveries and driver changes. With this picture in mind, Ford set Roy Lund, the British engineer responsible for the GT40, to work designing the all new long haulage truck of the future. That truck was Big Red and later showcased at the 1964 World Fair in New York. Big Red was a large old girl coming in at 170,000 pounds gross weight with a 280 gallon tank that had a range of around 600 miles and could cruise at a steady 70 miles an hour. It was also one of the first trucks to have air suspension and its suspended cab was also the first of its kind. The cab was designed for long calls with a support crew of two in mind. It housed large viewing windows all round so the driver had less blind spots and the interior had a kitchen equipped with a hot drinks dispenser, a fridge and even a warming oven. The passenger had the luxury of an onboard television that only they could see and if the food wasn't any good luckily there was an onboard toilet and wash area. The cab also had a light up map of America's newly built highway system to pinpoint any routes ahead. After it was unveiled at the World Fair, Big Red began its national tour across America stopping in places such as Boston, Chicago and Los Angeles until the campaign came to an end in 1965. After this the story of Big Red gets a little bit more complicated. It's after this promotional tour where Big Red's story starts to split. 
The first story about what happened next was that it eventually returned to Ford and was hidden away in a unit somewhere at the Dearborn Proving Grounds. However, Dearborn Ford themselves have come out numerous times to say that they haven't got it and they don't know where it is. The second story of what happened to the truck once the tour ended was that it was being hauled through the southeast back to Detroit when the transport rig broke down and Ford's racing team Holman and Moody stepped in, having it towed back to them in Charlotte. Some also say that it returned to a Ford facility in Michigan before this until Holman and Moody actually bought the truck for themselves. Luckily for us, the son of John Holman, founder of Holman and Moody Racing, recently spoke to the papers about Big Red and his company's involvement with it. Lee Holman, the son of founder John Holman, states that Big Red was actually still going to four promotional rallies and shows up until 1970, where at the Omni Car Show in Atlanta, Big Red was drained of oil and fuel and put on display. After the event, an employee from Ford flew in from Detroit to return the truck. However, not realising it had been drained, proceeded to try and run the engine, causing it to be destroyed in the process. Ford hired a truck trailer to tow Big Red back home, however this broke down near Charlotte, where Ford asked Holman and Moody Racing if they could store it at their local airport hangar nearby, which they agreed to. John Holman and Henry Ford II fell out shortly after this because Ford cancelled the racing contracts due to the Clean Air Act of 1970. After the contract stopped and some arguing later, Henry Ford II sent John Holman a letter stating that everything Ford related in their possession, they could keep. Unfortunately, they had forgotten that Big Red was still there at the time, and apparently when Ford realised and tried to arrange pickup, John told them to piss off as Big Red is now theirs. In 1968, both trailers were sold off privately, and one of them went to the Miss Bahadai race team to haul boats. The trailer was repainted in the company's race livery and the other one was sold to Bill Strope to haul race cars in California. Unfortunately, no one knows what happened to either trailer from this point and they have never been located since. In 1978, Lee Holman took over HM Racing and the company decided to have a large yard sale at the hangar. Famously, Big Red appeared on the promotional flyer for that sale. This would be the last time Big Red was seen out in the public eye. And although people think it was in this sale that Big Red found its owner, according to Lee Holman, it actually took them years to find a buyer for the truck, but in the early 80s, they found somebody. The same somebody that owns it today. The next 43 years of its life is a real mystery, and the only thing we've had to go on is a string of nondescript forum postings from people claiming to either know the owner or be the owner of Big Red. However, none of them have ever provided evidence of the claims, which has often led the automotive world to believe that it's simply ghost talk or just trolling. So that leaves us with a big question of just where is Big Red today? As mentioned above, for years the whereabouts of the truck was all just hearsay and rumours on automotive forums. Some say that the truck was restored during the 80s, some say it was painted blue, others say it was painted a different shade of red. There's even a post from a person claiming to be Big Red's owner themselves stating that he restored Big Red and put a new 707 turbine engine in it. Luckily, Pete Holderith from The Drive decided to do the legwork and spend last year researching these claims to find out the truth. They managed to contact the current owner using an attorney, and he was happy to share the story with them as long as they kept his name and location private. It turns out the current owner, who was actually at the truck's New York World Fair debut, brought Big Red from Holland and Moody in the early 80s and had spent over two years doing a full restoration. Apparently, the truck was pulled backwards out of the H&M yard using a tandem road tractor with a tow plate from a fifth wheel, all the way to the shop where the new owner was to have it repainted and restored. The owner states that it was never painted blue like some claim, but was a different shade of red when he got it, and he's now returned it to the original colour. The biggest task, however, was sourcing a new engine for the truck, as the original was destroyed and obviously wasn't included in the sale. By 1983, the owner had travelled to Ford's headquarters in Dearborn to gather as much information as he could on the build process. It was here where he also met John Stoper, the man known as the Ford Big Red Caretaker, who knew more about the truck than anyone. As the 705 engine was no longer around, he had to source one of the newer 707 models from Engine Technologies Corporation, 
a company that had bought Ford's old gas turbine technology after their projects had finished. This engine arrived in 1984 and John Stoper himself helped with the rebuild to make sure it was done correctly. The Allison gearbox which was originally for the 705 needed different flex plates which Allison provided to fit the 707 motor. After it was restored, Big Red was moved to a purpose-built garage where it still remains today. The restoration was done over 35 years ago and hasn't actually drove since 2000, however the owner states it's looked after and would fire up with a little TLC. Now I know what you're thinking, if Big Red's been restored and rebuilt to its former glory, then why on earth haven't we seen it yet? Well the answer's actually quite a simple one. Because of Big Red's immense weight, it's limited in terms of what roads it can actually travel on in America, which limits where the owner can even take it to begin with. Not to mention it's powered by an extremely rare unobtainable turbine engine where parts no longer exist and neither do the skilled people that built them. So even if the owner could get it to the highway system for example, if the engine suffered issues or blew up again, that could be the end of Ford's Big Red forever. Some think that the owner has spent the last 35 years making sure it doesn't happen. So you can understand why in his ownership it hasn't actually been taken to any shows or seen on the road, because he doesn't want to break it. The owner also stated that he didn't want to turn his home into a museum and having loads of random people constantly turning up to see the vehicle, which is why he's kept it private for so long and doesn't post it on the internet for the world to see. However, he does insist that the truck won't be hidden forever and its day will eventually come. He hasn't ruled out that it may one day end up in the Henry Ford Museum and that a new photo shoot of the truck is needed to show how it looks now in 2021. So there we have it folks, Ford's 1964 Big Red and in my humble opinion the greatest truck to ever grace these fine lands has been found safe and well, being looked after in a purpose built unit until the day that the sun can shine down on it again. I'm sure there's plenty more to Red's story that we haven't actually covered in this video, so if you're eager for more information, head over to The Drive because they're posting new articles weekly about the truck and its stories from over the years. And if you're wondering why Ford only made one of these breathtaking trucks of the future, well unfortunately times and plans for the world changed and what Ford thought would be the next big step in automotive transportation quickly became a one-off fad just to showcase what Ford could do when they put their mind to it. Not to mention, like most jet turbine road concepts, the turbine's massive first and poor emissions performance meant that by the time the truck had finished its promotional tour in 1965, Ford had already cancelled any future production, and so Big Red became the first and last of its kind. That's everything from us for this week, but if you want to find out more random information about random things you didn't think you wanted to know about, well hit the subscribe button and turn them notifications on.